Warhammer 40k, the elite soldiers of Cadia are known as Katakin. They're one of the coolest, grittiest, and most grim units in all of 40k, and today we're going to paint a sweet little winter ops scheme that's both easy to execute and doesn't take too long. The best part of all, with these tips that we're going to go over in this video today, you'll have some Katakin that look really great. When thinking about a winter ops scheme for any Imperial Guard unit, it's very easy to feel put off by the idea of having to paint a bunch of camouflage on every single model in the squad, that being something that's probably going to take quite a long time. But I have a little scheme laid out for you here that takes away most of that and leans more into a stormtrooper y kind of vibe for some really great looking Kasakin. As you can see here, I'm starting off with a model that's primed in a mid-grey. In this case, I airbrushed Wizard Grey from Two Thin Coats, but any mid-grey will do the job here. And the first thing I want to attack is actually the carapace armour. So I'll be applying just a couple of thin coats of a cold off-white kind of tone here. Again, I went with Viejo colour Wolf Grey here, but any sort of cold off-white will do the trick. After that, it's just a brief nip back to Wizard Grey to do a bit of tidying up in any areas where I splodged Light Grey onto the Mid Grey parts. Nice and easy. From there, I can take some Agrax Earthshade, and I'm going to thin this really heavily with Lamia Medium. This is probably 3 to 1, 4 to 1. I'm going to paint that all over the model, just being careful to avoid any staining on the big flat surfaces, by using a little bit of additional medium on the brush to wipe it away. And after letting that dry thoroughly, that's all the big areas tackled and we can move on to some of the fiddlier bits. First of all, leathers get a coat of, well, a uh, leathery brown. No surprises there. My choice for this was Quirus Leather from Two Thin Coats because I really like how ready toned it is. It gives a really nice offset to the cold tones I've already used. After that comes black details, guns, piping, little bits of equipment. There's a good few of them and they're mostly fairly small. I like matte black from Viejo for this because, well, as the name says, it gives a really matte finish, but it does, unlike other matte blacks, still give a really dark black too. Now at this point, you could just bang in a few metallics if you want them, finish the bases, and that would be more than fine for a tabletop ready scheme. But I'm painting this for Kill Team, so I want to give it a little bit more love than that, seeing as after these 10 models, it's very unlikely I'll ever paint anything more for them. So, I'm going to give the lighter parts of the armour just some scraggly textured highlights in pure white. The scraggliness is a great way to encourage that battle-worn ruddy look, and as a bonus, it's actually easier than painting cleanly. Then, using some really thin, super dark brown paint and a brush with a very good point, I'm going to hit these little dotty lines around all the edges to simulate chips, dings and scuffs. This is, again, another great way to lean into battle-worn armour, but it carries that same bonus of being much easier to pull off than, say, edge highlighting. Now that the armour's done, I also want to get just a little bit of highlight on the undercloth. There's actually not many areas of cloth on these that would catch significant light, so just a couple of tickles with some lighter greys is more than adequate to get them where I want them. Now I don't want a ton of shiny metallic on these, because I feel like it kind of ruins that Spec Ops vibe. So instead, what I did was anywhere where I might have normally painted steely or metallic tones, I instead did that chippy highlighting again. Same for all the different metallics. My go-to colour for the steel tones is Viejo Metal Colour Dark Aluminium, the airbrush one. Amazingly, as well as being a great airbrush paint, it happens to also work great with a normal brush too. And you can really see, once you look at the whole completed step, how this certainly still tells the eye you're looking at metal, but it's metal that's been maybe blacked down for stealth, and then lost some of that blacking down due to use. It's a great little bit of visual storytelling. Now next I need to get those leathers sorted, so after a bit of non oil to shade them down, I'll once again get chippy and choppy with the highlights using boarhide and dwarven flesh, again both from two thin coats. If you're not picking up on the theme with this tutorial, it's that you can use inaccurate, fast, easy strokes and still create beautiful detail. Notice how we're this far through the paint job and we've done virtually no clean detail painting. Now across these miniatures, there's also just some little parts like balaclavas and exposed skin that I've either already done tutorials for before or just wouldn't really fall into the scope of this video. 
So while I quickly deal with those, instead of showing them to you in detail, I want to talk about this video's sponsor, and that is you. See, whilst having external sponsors for videos is brilliant and means that once in a blue moon, I get to take a small wage from doing this. The one and only reason I can really afford to keep making content is your fine selves. Through my Patreon and Ko-fi campaigns, which start at just £1 a month, your pledges help pay for equipment, resources, and any learning I need to do in order to bring you these videos. The majority of videos take up to and around a week to make, sometimes a little bit more. So this section is just here as a huge thank you to those of you who support the channel and allow a small content creator to keep making content. If you're not currently a supporter but feel like the content is helpful, why not check out the links below and sign up on Patreon or Ko-fi for £1 a month or a little more if you're feeling generous. As well as joining the ranks of people I'm eternally grateful to, you'll get early access to my videos and access to my Discord server where you'll get a behind the curtain look at all sorts of aspects of my work. Right then, back to the painting. For the blacks, I'm actually gonna be treating some of them like black leather. So instead of a neutral gray highlight, I'm gonna hit them with a mixture of black and a really bright green. In this case, it's livery green from Viejo Game Color. After that, a small addition of some sunny skin tone lifts things to their final point of highlight. Again, sticking with that chippy choppy kind of vibe. The remainder of the blacks just get simple blue-gray edge highlights, keeping it really straightforward. There's also a little plasma in this squad, and I don't really want to go whole hog and do the really complicated long method of doing plasma, so I'm going to try and do something a bit simpler here. I want red, orange, and yellow express paints to create a bit of a gradient over a white base. I want the yellow focused towards the center and the edges heading toward red. Then to finish things out, I'm just going to use a little black and pick out the tips of the coils just to sort of separate them a bit from the glow. I also want to detail some areas like the sergeant's chainsword by using some kind of rusty tones. Now, this is not actually representing rust really, so to say, but more just general battlefield grime. You'll want to really heavily thin this and drop it into, well, basically recesses and the like. Don't be alarmed if it looks weird at first though. You'll actually be amazed how different this looks once it's dry. And then it's just a case of basing them up however you like. I decided to go with some snow over some pre-made industrial bases to kind of tell the story that they're maybe on some forge world in the winter. So, do you want to take a look at them? Well, I'll make a deal with you. If you hit the like button on this video, maybe even the subscribe button, I'll let you take a look. How's that sound? Deal? All right. Let's have a look then. So in not too many steps at all, that's how you can get some sweet winter ops casakin without ever actually having to really paint much fine detail at all. I hope you've enjoyed these tips and that you'll find some use from them. This is actually one of my favorite methods for painting, never doing any real smooth detail. So I've been keen to make this video for a while and I really hope it goes down well with you lot. And with that said, I guess I should be off to try and actually learn the kill team rules. So thanks for watching, folks, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye for now.